um, UFC 249 is postponed finally the um, common sense has prevailed and Dana White's silly experiment that he essentially bought an island or hired an island to ship all his UFC fighters over to um, do the UFC 249 card has been cancelled this is regard um, referring to Brett Okamoto's tweet Okamoto 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 Earlier on today, he says, uh, "Breaking UFC 249 has been cancelled. All UFC two, all UFC events postponed indefinitely due to COVID-19." Dana White says he was ready to promote the fight, but things were taken out of his control. Much, much more to, on this to come. So, first thing, like just reacting to that, I would say good, right? I was never in favour of having this fight in the first place. I think, or having a card in the first place, I think it was pretty stupid of them to think that that could happen. I understand the need to provide people with some sort of form of entertainment to get their mind off things you know stuff is a bit bleak out there you turn on the news and it feels as if like you know this COVID-19 virus is going to seep through your windows and choke you whilst you're sleeping with your wife and kids I understand that but considering the fact that we haven't necessarily identified you know we haven't we haven't kind of figured out testing yet um, there's all these weird anomalies popping up all over the place people that get it and then get it again um, there's cases of people who are fairly you know fit and look after themselves who are getting and dying there's the case of people who aren't that fit getting there and recovering um, there's spikes and peaks all over the place we're not in a place yet where we have any sort of processes or procedure that can allow such an event to take place right even in hospitals where they have you know nurses and doctors and all that sort of stuff um, going through uh contamination or going through what you call decontamination zones putting on different pieces of equipment throwing stuff away in the bin double layering up on mars putting a shield on and they're still susceptible to it so ufc fighters to so control in that kind of environment is very risky and if anything considering the level of money that's involved considering the fact that the ufc wants to be positioned in a way that they are regarded uh, similar or talked about in the same conversations as the nfl or the nba in america it just doesn't sit well because you know those leagues would never ever entertain this sort of thing right not now anyway you'd probably wait a little bit later down the line when things settle down a bit then you can maybe pop out the woodwork and say hey let's do this let's do this because the key stakeholders will be more willing to risk their money and reputation to do it then because they know the returns are going to be amazing but right now the the amount of bad pr this could generate because again if it goes well you've got the ability to in a week's time, I don't know if they could promote it well enough anyway, because I don't know how much they spend. Usually in my experience of putting on parties and pubs and bars, the later you put on a party, the more you usually pay because you didn't plan ahead of time. You're having to get things last minute. People know you're desperate. They, you always kind of pay over and above what you probably should have paid if you was planning it out properly. So imagine if UFC decided they were going to do 249 on this fucking island anyway, right? Months ago before the outbreak kind of spread all over the globe. And then it happened to come around now it would probably wouldn't cost them that much right but doing it now last minute trying to get broadcasting people to come down of maybe because they got an in-house team out it'll make it a little bit easier but just in general it would have all of those things in in due right all it takes is one person just a, you know some stage hand some production assistant no one even that big just one person could sit within that kind of ufc universe to get it and then suddenly things go goo goo gaga um so that way i'm fine and of course fighters as well for their health and safety in the long run because it looks like you know fighters are like basketball players they're like football players their profession their sport their job of choice is fighting so they love to fight no problem but the organization has to be able to step in and decide when it's safe to fight because those guys would fight on the street corner if it you know if someone was able to cut them a check and put people and have an audience to watch them they'd fight literally anywhere on the moon in a car park they don't give a shit because they are fighters same with the football players right if you got them to play in a village somewhere with no fans they'll do it because they love playing football but the ufc needs to be more responsible and kind of step in and kind of make that decision but they didn't so um it seems as if the powers that be people whether it's disney um, whether it's espn decide to step in and and be the wiser parent in this case and mma fighting kind of broke it down a little bit more here I'm going to get up here so we can see what's going on with the deal. Let me see if I can put it up here one second. Du, du, du. So this is from MMA Fighting right here. Right? Let's see if I can get it up on here. 
So, MMA fighting, UFC 249, up and coming events postponed due to coronavirus pandemic. Dana White promises the fight and will proceed. So, even though, you know, he's hit a stumbling block, he's still trying to go Barry on, you know, just bullishly trying to dig deep and do it. Now, the bullish attitude behind it, I'm not sure what it is because I remember reading something along the lines of, you know, ESPN or Disney has a contract in place with UFC that um, means that they, if they are able know that they have they are they have to hit a certain number of amount they have to hit a certain number of events a year in order to get the 750 million whatever they've been promised in their contract if they don't hit that amount of fights however long it takes them that deal is null and void i'd assume so right um those guys don't play when it comes to those kind of contracts so i understand the need to kind of get a fight on but i just think in terms of pr in terms of perception in terms of backlash if they would have just waited a couple of weeks down the line when things maybe settled down a bit when the peaks in certain places just you know dipped i just read a report recently that supposed to be the projection of death that was like going to be a hundred thousand has now been lowered to like 60 right which is obviously still not bad but it's not 100 if you wanted to be a little bit um capitalist if you want to capitalize on that and take advantage of the kind of uh brief a fleeting moment of victory that will be it but now whilst everyone is still confused and they're nervous to go shopping to put on an event like that it just doesn't make sense and also in terms of optics because again we, you can't necessarily blame ufc for this but i would assume in terms of optics the government wouldn't want a major sports organization like the ufc to put an event on because it would send the wrong message to the public they'd be like oh that's on that means i can go out with my friends Right, there. Of course, that correlation is a bit, it's a bit of a stretch, it's a bit weak. I know, but with your those, if, if you are sitting on that board, and you're those people that get paid that kind of money, and you're making those kind of decisions, you have to look at the, you have to kind of pull away from it and look from it, look at it from a bird's eye point of view, and try and think of things five to ten steps forward ahead of time, as opposed to what they end up doing, where just flying off the seat of his pants in it. But what can you say? Anyway, let's read the article here. So this is from MMA Fighting. It says the following. Um, UFC 249 has been officially cancelled. Um, the stunning reversal comes just days after UFC President Dana White confirmed plans to move forward with events starting with the card planned from April 18th. The UFC has now decided to postpone all its upcoming shows with no timeline for when the up promotion will return to action, which is how it should have been from the beginning. They should have just done this from the start, said they were going to postpone all the fights, but not cancel them. Because I don't think anyone's cancelled anything, really. Some, thing, some events have been postponed until next year, which is maybe a bit of a cancellation. But most things have been postponed because most contracts that you sign with the insurance companies, with the promotion companies, with the licensees, uh, whatever, they would have some sort of clause in it where if you cancelled it, you would have a penalty charge or something. We have to give back some sort of money. It, no, there's a lot of there's a lot on the line if you cancel an event. So I understand the need for to to be clear in the language and say no, we haven't cancelled it, we postponed it. If they did that from the beginning, you would have, no one would have complained, especially when it comes to Khabib and Tony Ferguson. We went to see that fight for ages. No one would have complained waiting a couple of more weeks, maybe a couple of more months to see them fight in their true glory, um, you know, in a sanctioned event with maybe, if not fans, maybe some level of spectators there. No one would have been um, against it whatsoever. It continues, um, UFC broadcast partner ESPN initially reported the news. So today we got a call from the highest level you can go at Disney and the highest level ESPN White said in their video interview ESPN. He said, one thing that I said since we started our relationship and partnership with ESPN is that it's been an incredible one. It's been an amazing partnership. So, again, I'm not sure why he's saying this. Is it because he's trying to put it out there that he didn't make the call? Like, he didn't say it's off? He's trying to pass the blame to the UFC, to the ESPN and Disney? Or is it him trying to flex as if, like, the highest people in the office are the ones that called me and told me to, like, lay off? Either way, it doesn't look good on you do you know what I mean like the adult had to step in and tell you the little kid to kind of come back inside and wash his hands and have his dinner or wash his or, or wash his hands or brush his teeth and go to bed so it continues here right um it's been being very good very very good to us and the powers that be there ask me to stand down and not to do this event next Saturday the UFC initially postponed three events scheduled for March 21st and 28th and April 11th due to the initial outbreak, but they sneaked in that Brazil one. And if you remember the Brazil event that they sneaked in, which was behind closed doors, no one got tested. So they were trying to make it seem as if they were going to test everyone and we have the most healthiest roster of people. They were strong and fit, which is a really nonsense idea to assume that a virus isn't going to infect you because your fighters are strong. Even if they're strong, if, if they get it, because, you know, if you subscribe to the brain dead, like Brendan Shaw point of view, where he says, oh, you know, if you get it um, for, a, for a week, you're not dead, isn't it? It's just a week 
that you're going to be laid up in the ICU. Okay, a week on the ICU, um, maybe close to getting a ventilator. When usually, if you if you're on a ventilator, it seems like that's like your death note. So you take up space. So these fit um, supreme athletes who are in the prime of their life are going to be taking up space in beds, uh, hold up for a week because an event that what five percent of the population are going to watch, maybe less than that. Continues. Um, in the aftermath, those cars are being cancelled. White has an adamant about promoting cars starting with UFC two four nine in April. Just recently, White said he secured the location for upcoming events with the Tachi Palace Resort and Casino in Le Mans, California, serving as a makeshift home for the promotion which weekly events. Let me see what this actually looks like. I didn't even see what it looks like. Um, so this is the this is not the island. This is just what is this the island or just the place where they're going to do it? Yeah. Okay. This is the place that we're going to do it because they they don't have um. I don't know what the rules are there, but I guess this is where they were going to have the actual event. This palace, they're probably going to be over in an arena in there or something, right? Cool. There's no pictures of it on the inside. We don't really see what's going on, but this is what it's going to be. Anyway, let's go to the article. Um, Why well, also revealed plan to secure a private island where he could hold events for international fighters unable to get into the States due to the current restrictions. So that event was going to be, so that's why all the fighters are on the roster were based in North America. And then I guess the international fights, after the fact, they'll have people flying out from their countries, if they can, to this private island, and then fight and then go back again, which is, you know, nutty to say the least, isn't it? If he wanted to go aboard with it, he could just, like, get his own plane in it and fly them in from wherever they are, from a main point somewhere, they all fly in, let's say, to London or, I don't know, Berlin or wherever maybe, and then they fly out to the US, I don't know, but it's still a crazy thing. Um, for all events, White promised to screen fighters and all other event attendees before and just before, prior to the event. Several people with knowledge of the promotion plans later to MMA fighters and attendees were being sent at home at home coronavirus tests and expected another round of tests just prior to the event. The problem, like I said before, the problem is these tests aren't accurate. There's been some um, some uh, discrepancies here and there with tests, and if you've been paying attention with the news, and I'd imagine these tests aren't instant, right? They haven't. I don't think they developed technology or they developed the processes just yet, where you can have a test sort of like um like a diabetes one, where you just prick your finger and you can instantly get a reading. I don't think that exists just yet, because if they did, the governments would just buy a hoard of them and send them to everybody around the country, right? Just to make sure everyone's okay, um, especially with people cracking under the lockdown. This is the fight. Anyway, the continues here. The fight card was scheduled to proceed with makeshift headliner of the UFC lightweight champion. Khabib was ruled out of the fight with Tony Ferguson, the fifth cancellation of the booking due to a reported travel restriction um, from coronavirus in Michael Meadows' place when Justin Gaethje, who was set to fight Ferguson for the interim title. Um, on Wednesday, ex-champ Rosa Madrinas withdrew from the rematch with Jessica Andrade. Her manager later said they would draw the result of two deaths in Namanujas in Rosa's family from coronavirus. So imagine, they have all this flat coming at them from media. Most the UFC media has been a bit, you know, they've they've been they've been they've been a bit pussy with this, right? They haven't really spoken that much out of it because I guess for the most part, because you know, it's Dana White. If you speak out against him, it doesn't really change anything. He just gets even more bullish. His head gets more red, and he just doubles down. The fans are a little bit in love with his kind of nonsense that he does and the, the kind of circle that follows him. But yesterday you heard people like, you know, making disparaging comments against Rose, saying that she's a quitter, saying that she always flakes. And then now it transpires that the yeah, reason why she pulled out is because two members of her family died due to this virus going on. And the UFC knew this, right? They were aware of what happened and they were still willing to go forward with the event. Like, imagine how irresponsible that is. And imagine someone else got ill at the event or catch the virus and then this story came out you know it would just be a, a pr disaster but again someone like dana just loves all the attention negative or positive but the reason this is so discerning is that if this was just like you know if they wanted to be the next pride if they wanted to be a evolution of pride right and just the professional version of pride let's say fair enough but from the beginning or from the moment they sold to the esp to espn the moment they went public, they've made it known that they wanted to make UFC a legitimate quote-unquote sport. Um, so much so that, you know, they get the best athletes from some of the best colleges around the world. Sorry, around America for the most part. Well, around the world, let's say. Um, deciding that instead of going to play basketball or NFL where, you know, the contracts are lucrative, they could maybe go to USC and, you know, and get all the glory there. But number one, of course, the money and the monetary rewards, unless you're one of the top superstars, isn't that great? And then, of course, there's a danger of you fighting, you know, underneath the 
stewardship of someone like Dana White who essentially just, you know, does what he wants to do on a whim, um, runs an organization like he's running, you know, a makeshift backyard wrestling organization. It's really, really insane to be honest. Um, he says, anyway, now the entire card has been scrapped with the UFC postponing all events. He says here, it's a quote from him, right? Um, while the organization was fully prepared to proceed with UFC 29, ESPN has requested the postponement of the event and subsequent bouts until further noticed. Jesus Christ. UFC looks forward to resuming the live full events, event schedule soon. And he says, yeah, the end here says we'll be the first sport back, which again, I don't understand this first. Who cares who's first or who's not? I think most sporting organizations are looking forward to putting on some event, right? I've heard football are planning on doing a kind of World Cup sort of thing or Olympic sort of idea where you fly all your athletes to one location or they play all their games behind closed doors in one location um, during, you know, back to back during, I don't know, let's say a period of like eight to ten weeks and then you can kind of conclude the season and then from there you can kind of decide how you do next season. Um, everyone's kind of people are exploring that kind of idea but again the idea is only plausible or is only kind of be possible if the rate of contamination or the death rate or whatever may be kind of plateaus a little bit i'd imagine so again just speaking from a layman i don't know nothing i'm just reading what i see on the internet but i'd imagine until the virus is kind of under some level of control um scheduling any kind of event now is just not the major thing on anyone's to-do list really it's not i would imagine so anyway but what, what do i know but again i'm happy it's over happy it's all done um it says here at the end here fire island is real it's a real thing the infrastructure is being built right now and that's really going to happen and it will happen on esp it's just a very it's frightening really you you would think again i think to closing you'd think like because i think he mentioned you know having the pressure on his back about supporting his fighters and wanting to put money in their pocket now i'm under no illusion that there's probably people ringing up dana's phone hitting them up on text and sending messages and being like hey you know i've got family to feed my kids are in school blah blah blah. i've got mortgage to pay i get it but the reason why they're in a position primarily is because the payment system especially especially unless you're like you know connor nate uh john jones i don't know who else right you're not necessarily getting the big bucks. Everyone's on really, really low. In the, the the salary for average UFC fighter is like, what, 20000 to $30,000 or something? And then when you divide that between five people, right, whether it's his manager, agent, uh, coaching, nutritionist, there's not much left, especially now that they've kind of taken away the ability for fighters to wear any kind of sponsored gear in a ring, right? Because a lot of fighters, I think it was a Brennan Shaw mentioned it, a lot of those fighters you say in that, that era back in the day where you could put loads of logos in your shorts, they said that made up for the lack of income they got from the organization, right? The ability to put, you know, um, uh, Red Bull on the back of your head or something, that that was a way to kind of boost your income level, especially if you're somebody just coming up. So part of the reason why they're in this, is, this predicament is that Dana White is unwilling to pay his fighters a fair wage. Um, he's willing to kind of, you know, spend money allegedly on you know sex workers willy nilly or gamble away money in fucking Las Vegas, but when it comes to playing, he's paying his fighters who are risking life and limb, um, you know, in order to kind of reach a zenith of glory, he's willing to do that. And now suddenly he becomes the all caring, all nurturing person that wants to look after fighters, make sure they get paid well. So it's like, come on, man, decide what lane you want to be in. And then for the fighters, I don't really blame them because they want to get paid. That's not to, that's nothing to do with them. But in this current time. Uh, we haven't heard anything from USC about them providing the fighters any with any kind of allowance, stipend, any kind of support, any kind of universal basic income sort of thing where they give them a thousand pound a month or something. Again, it's not nothing because I'm sure some of those guys have got big families, they've got mouths to feed, they've got teams to look after, I'm sure, but at least something in their pocket, yeah, like $900, $1,000 a month, like, that'll go a long way as opposed to making them cut weight, making them train making them go through you know mental preparation all this shit just for the fight to be pulled under the rug and again this was always on a card it was always 50 50 anyway right but then for for you to get this faint bit of hope and then suddenly you have to get pulled out from underneath you must be devastating especially for the people that actually didn't mind going because it's actually quite a cool idea right this idea that you've got this island that you're gonna do these fights on the gimmick is quite cool the idea kind of rings true right it reminds you of mortal Kombat. it's a fucking fantasy for mixed martial arts fans but not under these circumstances just not necessary um again it would be like a hollow victory to have this back on and become like the winner of it i don't really see the point of it but 
again glad it's over glad it's done um and now we can kind of move on to other things and hopefully um they find out they find a solution that works for the best of everyone going forward and again thoughts and feelings go out to rose number junior who's kind of having to you know um number one have to deal with all the trolls online saying that she's a quitter because she decided to pull out an event because someone in her family was ill and now because you know the you know the, the news has transpired because that's actually why she pulled out of it so thoughts and feelings go out to her as well and make sure you know you be nice on social and send us some nice support messages but yeah guys over man